Okay, uh, good afternoon. My name is Ryan Talavis, and I'm a security consultant uh, in Hawaii. I work for a company called Security NA. I'm also a member of the Hawaii HoneyNet project, and today I will be talking about dangerous mines, the art of guerrilla data mining. Uh, obviously, my talk will be about data mining and how it pertains to information security. And I'm also a big uh, military, military intelligence fan. So this is also going to be about data mining and how it pertains to information warfare and, and, and military intelligence. So my hope for this talk is that I would be able to give you a short glimpse of how uh, data mining, uh, you can use data mining in your own research. And I, I really hope that you gain something from it so we can like share. I'm always looking for new data sets to use and all that, uh, all uh, different techniques and all that stuff. So I'm really looking forward to having you learn and having us do more collaboration and stuff. So before all that, I always start with a quote. I think this quote actually embodies the principles of uh, this whole talk. So it is said that if you know your enemies and know yourself, you will not be imperiled in a hundred battles. Which is true, right? Very true. So, so enough about quotes. Let's, let's go on with the talk. Okay, for a brief background. So uh, actually this research actually got formalized and started about two years ago. I presented in Black Hat called uh, this thing called security analytics. It is the concept of using data mining and artificial intelligence in security and information warfare. What I did then was I presented techniques, theories, uh, and uh, theories about data mine that we could use in information security. Back then, I think what I did was I presented a lot of, uh, of algorithms, math, and stuff like that, and I don't think that, I think I ended up with a pretty boring talk. So, so uh, I've learned my lesson, and for this talk, there will be no talk about math or any uh, complex algorithms and stuff like that. So for this talk, we move from theory to practical applications. So hopefully I'll be able to provide to you scenarios, tools, more importantly, tools and examples to leverage these techniques. So let's start. So information, information is the key. It is the key to data mining. So I am focusing on two areas, and these two areas are information security and uh, information warfare, pretty much military intelligence. So military, reconnaissance, information gathering, and espionage play an important part in battle tactics. Yes, that is Sparta. And uh, yeah, I just put that there because it highlights the, highlights the importance of information, like how a small force can be able to leverage it to gain advantage to a larger force, stuff like that. So information security. Obviously, the more information you have, you'll have a better chance to protect your organization. Obviously, if you have like good threat intelligence, you have uh, a better chance in drafting good, better policy, hiring better people, uh, using the correct tools. So those are the key, the cornerstones of our information. So let us now talk about uh, information warfare. So information warfare is the use and management of information in pursuit of a competitive advantage over an opponent. So the key things here is use and management because information, like it's just ones and zeros if not used properly. So think of it, a book is just pieces of paper if not read and understood, right? Pretty much like that. Analysis, data analysis it is what makes information actually meaningful. So. This is not new. This is not new. Uh, there's like, everybody plays the game of information warfare. So usual suspects, right? CIA, FBI, NSA, IAO. And of course, let us not forget foreign governments. And don't think that it's only the big foreign governments like China, Russia, North Korea. Uh, there, I, I've come from like developing countries and they have something. Everyone has something. Everyone plays the game. And uh, what I forgot to put there is not only that, crime syndicates. I also uh, I actually saw this very nice talk yesterday about spam and pump and dump stock market. That's pretty cool. And uh, aside from that, big corporations think about uh, corporate espionage. 
corporate intelligence. That's also a kind of information warfare. So just that, everyone pretty much plays the game of information warfare. So let's go to more specifics, like projects. So the projects here, we have Project Echelon, probably the most popular. I guess you've heard about that, like Project Echelon. We have Talon, Advise, Matrix, Able Danger. That was pretty cool. You, anyone here familiar with Able Danger, like the 9-11 the stuff, right? So it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. But I'm not a good uh, resource here to talk about these stuff. I won't be talking about these stuff. All I wanted to point out is these are large endeavors, maybe millions, billions of dollars. Why? Why are these large endeavors? Because there are distinct challenges in doing data mining. First and foremost, there's the sheer amount of data. There's just too much, just too much data. Resources, way too little. It could be uh, lack of effort, lack of tools, lack of money, a combination of everything. So in that diagram, as you see, th that's where the challenge is. You have so much data, but what you need is to funnel it and process it so you'll get something meaningful. So that's the goal. So that's what we are looking at. So this is where my research comes in. So I call it like the Veritas Project. Veritas is actually Latin for truth. So this uh, project is modeled after a threat and intelligence gathering premise. So it's just a fancy way of saying that I based it off some Cold War spy network movie. But you, it'll make sense a little later. It'll make sense. Uh, uh, my goal here is I primarily based it off community sharing approach and using tools, technologies, and techniques that are freely available. My, my goal here is so that you guys can also use it. So you guys can do it because information is a realm for everyone. So hopefully you'll be able to use these technologies, tools, and techniques that I'll be talking about in a little bit later in my talk. Okay, now I've told you like spy network, right? So here's the analogy. So think of it this way. You have agent one, you have agent two. Agent one gathers one, uh, some part of an inf uh, information from country one. Agent two picks up an information in country two. Both pieces of information are seemingly unrelated. So you have two pieces of not really usable information. So what happens here, goes to HQ, it get, gets filed, still two pieces of separate information. But here's where the thing is. Here's where, where the important thing is, the analysis. This is where you, uh, the important thing for this whole framework. It, this is what makes the framework work. And for example, uh, the analyst finds, uh, what you, uh, the analyst finds uh, agent one's information, analyst finds inf uh, information from agent two. So they put in together and they find relationships. That is the key for this talk, finding relationships between large sources of data. And when they find one, one is two, one plus one equals here, you find relationships. So one mediocre piece of information becomes something more relevant, something more useful. And that's where we have the uh, decision makers now, action, action based on what we find. So stepping back, let's go now to the framework. So just a little more, uh, we'll get to the actual framework now. So data collection, we have data collection, we have data storage, we have data analysis, and we have decision making. Okay, let's go through one, each one of those circles. Okay, now for the sources of data, it really depends on what you will be using, depends on what your research will be. So for example, if I had like, like I wanted to do some research on hacker chatter, I had a honey net or a honey pot, and I wanted to do some, some research on hacker chatter. So I'd use chat logs, right? So if I wanted to research on military intelligence, I'd have, I'd use uh, press releases and news releases. So sky's the limit here. You can use anything that, you, uh, that is based on your research. And the idea here is the more information that you can gather, the better your results will be. So that's the simple part. So data storage, information can be stored anywhere, pretty much anywhere, relational databases, flat files. This is possibly the easiest part of this, easiest part. So as long as you have something to store the information, you should be good. But here is the core of everything, analysis. So this is the most important part of the framework, crunching large amounts of data. 
we fi- uh, and the more important thing here is we find relationships within that data. And it is there where we find uh, data me- more meaningful. And I told you that I won't be t- uh, talking about uh, algorithms and stuff like that, but I have to just mention a few. So these are some of the things that if you do your data mining research, you'll probably like encounter them. So we have k-means, neural networks, support vector machines. Uh, we can talk about it, but uh, maybe later, maybe after the talk, if you would like to talk about it. I'd rather not, but, but if you want. So it's, uh, doing this manually, it's, it's not easy. But the thing here is, there's a lot of tools out there that you can actually use. So some of the good uh, data analysis tools that are out there and are free are, are these. Like, I use this a lot. The first one, uh, Text Garden. It's uh, just a group of uh, Windows binaries, like from some university in Slovenia. So it's very, very useful. It's hard to use, though. So, uh, so it takes some, some stuff to getting used to. So Ontogen, that's very useful, too. It has a really nice GUI. And uh, this is actually where I started off using. So I, I used that first. And that got me going with all this data analysis stuff. And later, I'll probably give you some sort of exercise so you can use it after, after this talk. And hopefully, uh, you'll get going with your own research. So the next stuff here is like more, the more popular ones. You've probably heard of it, Weka and RapidMiner. So I think that particular picture is actually from RapidMiner. And we have like Tanagra, Orange is a Python uh, implementation, Mead, which is more on sentiment analysis, but uh, I'll talk about that later. I don't really use it, but that's some, something that's up and coming, sentiment analysis. So obviously with all this data analysis, it's always up to us to do the interpretation. I have some uh, samples uh, a little bit later, why? Oh, so finally, that ends the concept part of the talk. So as I've said, I'm, I'd like to focus on uh, more on applications. So the, the rest of the talk will be more on applications and what I did for uh, what I did using uh, these particular concepts. Oh, that was fast. So <clears throat> uh, let's talk about the scenarios now. So I have a couple, uh, a number of scenarios that I would like to show you using data mining. So I'll just get this. Yep, I have a couple of scenarios to show you about data mining. So the first and foremost is trends research. Uh, that's really my flagship thing. I do a lot of trends research, like uh, finding relationships of different topics over time. So I have two versions of that. Uh, one use, using for information security and another one for for information warfare, military intelligence stuff. And the next one is malware taxonomy. It's not really that, uh, what do you call this, exciting, but I started off with that. So that's how I got, got started with all this data mining stuff. And I think that it's the perfect place for you guys to start also if you wanted to do this. So I'll show you that. Uh, yeah, sentiment analysis, just because it's the up and coming thing today. Then probably if we have time, I have some, it's not security, not even information warfare, but it's opinion polls. Uh, that's pretty interesting too. So uh, later, if we have time. So let's talk about trends research. So the thing here, what we're going to do is find increases in chatter. Find increases in chatter. And more importantly, find secondary topics that also increased because of the primary topic. Uh, you'll see this more clearly later in the graphs. So <clears throat> as I've said, we have the framework, right? Data collection, data storage, data analysis, and basically interpretation. Let's start with data collection first. So w- with this particular project, what I did uh, was just collect information security items. So the, the, these could be like news articles, press releases, blogs, forums, wh- whatever. It, uh, it's really dependent on what you're going to research. And the more information that you gather, the better. For example, here I just use crawlers. Sometimes I manually take them. So it all depends on how and what your research will be. So data storage, just a simple relational database. I just put it all there. And the thing here, the core, what I used with the data analysis tool is called, uh, yeah, I told you a while back, text garden. And since this, this was my very first implementation, it wasn't too fancy. I did the analysis per month. 
So version, uh, later version 2 will be daily. So this I did per month. So obviously I have to put it there, the decision making and interpretation. Uh, let me show you something here. Okay, yep. Okay. Okay, this is actually... Oh. Yep. This is actually a, 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 an engine running off what I was telling you guys. Unfortunately, it doesn't really fit too well in the screen, right? Oh, yep, there. So, for example, let's do like a quick search. Like, yep. Oops, nope, nope, not that, not, not that. Okay, l let me try one more time. Let's do a quick search. So this, as you can see, th these are increases in chatter, increases in chatter about, uh, on uh, specific topics, China. So that's the per uh, particular topic. So increases in chatter in China. And that's pretty simple. That's really simple to do. Find increases in chatter. Useful, but really simple. The key, but the key here, what's the important thing here, is find relationships, find topics that are related to that increase in chatter. So this is where this thing comes in. So this computer assisted thing is actually what it does, is it uses it, the algorithms that's built in there to find relationships, find the secondary topics that were related to those increases. So let's, let's click that one. Okay, pretty, huh? Pretty, but but quite confusing. So, yep. So that's it. Let, let me go back to, let me go back to the slides because it's more clear that, there. I just wanted to show you that so, so you'll know that I actually have something working and I'm not inventing all of this up. So, so, so here we go. This, is, this was what the, uh, you saw a while ago. So increases in China chatter. So increases the security chatter. And the, the, the thing is, like, what other topics are correlated with these activities? So you saw this also, right? So these are the correlated topics. Some are obvious, some are not. But for example, here, one of the correlated activities is nuclear activity. So basing off that, you'll have your hypothesis now. Hacker activity from China, nuclear activity. So where does that get us, right? You track that. This is, this is actually like tracking the two, uh, nuclear activity and hacker activity from China. So as you can see here, yep, yep, there's actually some sort of overlay. Yep, so as, you, uh, as all, we all well know, when there is smoke, uh, there's probably fire, right? So that's one thing. And you might be th thinking, yeah, I knew that. I knew there was like hacker activity in China then that's related with uh, nuclear activity, like nucle uh, nuclear labs and stuff like that. But think about it. Uh, it's not that easy for computers. With the human mind, it's, uh, it's pretty cool because we have like intuition, we have hunches, suddenly we connect one things. It's not easy for computers, and that's what, it, the, what this, this particular thing does. So let's do something that's a little bit more uh, closer to home. Let's do something about DEF CON. DEF CON. Yep. Okay. Let's try to track chatter about DEF CON. So you can see here. So th this is a pretty uh, limited data set, more on 2008 and early 2009. So you'll see here is these are increases in chatter uh, around the time for the call for papers. DEFCON call for papers. This is actually uh, increases in chatter based on the actual conference itself. So that's the conference itself. Then here about 2009, another increase in chatter, call for papers. So that's, uh, so obviously we know if we use like, we put in like submissions, like paper submissions, yep. you'll see that there's an overlay. There's a correlation between submission, paper submissions, and DEFCON, obviously. So call for papers, increase in submissions, then conference itself. This is kind of weird, because this actually appeared before the call for papers. 
Uh, I've yet to explain that. So this is like call for papers, increase in submission. So we all know that, right? So it's as expected. But there are some things, like when you are doing data mining, that's kind of weird. Like, why did this happen? Why is this thing correlated? Like, for example, let's do this. Defcon and crime. Whoop. Okay, yeah. Let's go back there. So this was the submission. This was crime. Hmm, Defcon, crime, Defcon, crime. Defcon, crime. Yeah. yeah, that's strange, right? So, conclusion. You know, you know this, right? 1984, Big Brother. So, let's do some Big Brother logic. DEFCON is correlated to crime. Crime is bad. Therefore, DEFCON is bad. Happy fail. Yeah, uh, really. Uh, and... This, Strange things you find, yeah? Strange things you find. So that was version one. That was version one. So after that DEF CON thing, I actually got inspired to make a DEF CON, uh, like a version two. Like, okay, let's do a version two. It's very, it's very similar. The only difference here is I used military chatter right now. Then I used the same thing, text garden, but I process it daily. So it's, uh, it's a little bit harder, but it's much more, accurate now, much more accurate now, though I focus more on military intelligence stuff. So, so what has this got to do with the research? Okay, let's, let's open that uh, VM again. Okay, military intelligence. Yep, okay. So I said, I, I'm from Hawaii, and the past, uh, the past few months I've been... Uh, there are two things that I've been thinking about. North Korea and missiles. <laughs> yep. So I began, I, I began trying to track military chatter or milita military press releases about North Korea. So here's, the, milita uh, here's the, the spikes in chatter. Obviously, you'll notice this one, right? The next... Ah, I, I, I began uh, I began doing like an overlay with missiles. So it's quite obvious, right? You, you see the overlay here with North Korea in missiles. So it actually began somewhere here and goes up to here. So let's go to the slides. Oop, oop, yep, so here's the North Korea chatter. You'll see overlaid with missiles, so you'll get here. So as, as you can see here, there's, there's a direct correlation with it. So as, uh, as expected, what do you expect, right? So you have talk, uh, talk about missiles, North Korea, missiles, North Korea, missiles, North Korea, and boom, here you go. And yes, now. So, so it's actually, you can actually like see the pattern there. Like going up, then there's something, then there's an action. So that was the things that I was uh, thinking about back in Hawaii. So North Korea and missiles. So, but after that, I felt a little bit safer. So and I began to like thinking of other stuff to use this for. So funny things like uh, there's like uh, strange things that uh, what drives your research, right? So, in any case, I began doing some more overlays. I don't know why I did this, but suddenly I, I began like overlaying different hotbeds. Like for example, uh, Korea, then Iraq. So I was, I, I was trying to like find like correlations between different hotbeds, different hotbed countries. So I began like starting like one by one. So as you can see here, like you see here like uh, the Korea spike and you have a spike in Iraq also, like chatter in Iraq. So I began like doing, doing like, I've been playing like Iran. Okay, this is going to be slower now. So I will, yep. So as you, can, you can see here, there's also the overlay at this one particular point. So let's do it in slides because it, it's going to be slow. North Korea and Iraq, right? 
North Korea, Iraq, and Iran. Russia. So you see that particular point, right? So everything's, everything's like correlating there. There's like a nexus or something. So here, here it is again. As you can see here, like in this particular graph, you see a slight, slight increase here. Then you find the nexus, and boom, goes up. This is around, uh, when's the North Korea one? The missile, May? I think it was May. Yep, I, I think so, yeah. I believe it is May. 2009. Oh, is, was it July? July? I forgot, it's so little. So anyway, these things are what you call tipping point events. So activities which results in the worldwide shifts of instability. So have you, uh, any of you guys uh, read Tipping Point? The book Tipping Point, it's pretty cool. So uh, the idea there was in Tipping Point, there's one event, one single event, which changes things. And from this particular point, there's a tipping point event, and it goes up. So it happens everywhere, like uh, even epi epidemics, trends, fashion trends, and stuff like that. So obviously, I have a theory here also. I also have a theory here. Uh, basically, it's about human nature. So human nature and fear. So, so obviously, when everyone is afraid, everyone is afraid. And, and right now, it's so easy to do that because there's like the media and all of that stuff. So there's an increase in worldwide tension. And with this increase in worldwide tension, actions are easily triggered. So it's uh, basically human psychology, right? Human nature. Fear, tension, then suddenly action is easily triggered, right? For, for example, if you are angry at someone, then, then you take out your anger with other people. So even if it's like totally unrelated, it gets somehow this triggers other stuff. So the, a wise man actually like, uh, actually mentioned this like way before I was born. Yeah. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. So that, was, that is my first theory. So the second theory, the second theory, uh, I like the military intelligence stuff, but, I, but uh, some of my uh, friends in Hawaii are big conspiracy theory fans. So, so the second theory is Skynet. <laughs> there is something out there. There is something out there. So anyway, that was, that was my version one and version two of the trends analysis. So, so uh, here, but here in the malware taxonomy, it's not as fancy as that. It's, this is not even like, uh, doesn't even uh, do it historically. But I started off with this. I started off my data mining uh, activities by using this stuff. So it's basically grouping similar malwares together, finding relationships between the two. Uh, for data collection, these are notes for malware analysis. So uh, these are not signatures. These are, these are actually like text, natural language, like a description, like this particular malware is blah, 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 something like that. So data storage, just flat files. And what I used here is probably the uh, simplest one that you can use, that you can probably uh, use for your uh, own research right on, right on the get-go. So I used Ontogen. So next, uh, this is, oh, let's start now, let's, let's do that. Yep, so I actually cheated, I started this off already, I started processing uh, at the beginning of my talk because it uh, actually takes a while, especially I'm using my netbook and stuff. So it, it's pretty simple, you use, just uh, grab Ontogen, new ontology, folder, then you pick the actual fol folder where your, uh, what do you call this, when, where your data is located. So that's what I did. I'll, I have some uh, instructions in the slides in doing this. So what happened there is it processed it. So I had like about 2,000 malware descriptions. And the thing here is what, what I want to do is have it uh, give me what are the groups uh, similar, uh, like two, for, for, for that 2,000 documents, give me similar groups of malware. So let's do, this is not an automatic uh, 
what you call uh, unsupervised learning. So this is semi unsupervised. So because it suggests. So as you can see here, it gave me suggestions of what those particular groups are. Uh, let's just run through this. Check, check, check. So uh, from those uh, 2,000 individual uh, text files, it gave me 10 groups. So these are the common groups. As you'll see, like we have uh, macro viruses, uh, boot sector viruses, and you can actually like start breaking this down. Like for example, this particular part, the macro viruses, you can uh, you can actually oops suggest you can actually still break it down. Add you'll see Excel and Word. So it's pretty simple to use, very, very easy. So just install it and you have something. So uh, let me go back to the slides. So the instructions are all here. So it was pretty simple. So these are, the, these are my data sources. These are all text files, text files with malware descriptions. You have here, bam, boop. Yep, what I wasn't able to show you was this particular thing. This actually shows you w what the particular documents are included in your group. So it grouped it together. Uh, sort by similarity. Oops. You'll see here, group together all the macro viruses. So it took minutes to process that uh, uh, 2,000 documents. And you can probably think of other, other very uh, useful uses that you can actually use this for. So, yep, let's go back. It actually does this, a pretty neat visualization thing, but it's too slow for me to, to show you here. So it clusters together all the similar instances. They're pretty, very pretty. So this is something that I hope like, I hope like after, after this talk, you can actually try it out. So you can like start like doing stuff and we can like share information. So here, for example, try this out. Just try this out like at home or something, like a Nessus and vulnerability profiling. So you have thousands in results, and all you need to know is what types of vulnerabilities define the network. So think of it like a, a, a network DNA something, a, a DNA something, yeah. Yeah, let, let's go through the let's go through the let's go through the framework, the four framework thing. So data collection, just run Nessus, just run Nessus on your network. Grab the XML files. So grab the XML files, and what do you do with the XML file? You just parse it. Try parsing it. And the important thing here is for each of those findings, uh, put it in a text file. So because uh, with Ontogen, uh, that's the only thing that it can handle, like text files. So what what you can do is probably like parse it using like Perl or something, like just grab the information there and spit it out as a text file. One finding per text file. One, because that's very important because it'll give you the weights and what type, like for example, there are more of these types of the vulnerabilities, there will be more text file, more text files and the more the weights will be, like stuff. So okay, so data analysis, just install Ontogen, the, the one that I showed you a while ago, then process the text files using Ontogen. So what you'll see there is a clustered view of co common vulnerabilities in your network. So if you just wanted to find out, okay, I have this tons of results, but I wanted to find out, okay, what are the major types of vulnerabilities in my network? And hopefully you'll be able to see this through that exercise I showed you. And ju just contact me if you need help or something. So, so hopefully you can try that, you can try that out. This is the, probably the simplest part, like simplest d data mining exercise that I can think of. And it started me off doing this. And hopefully it can start you off also. Okay, sentiment analysis. This is, this is uh, not really new because uh, yeah, two years ago I was already talking about this. The idea of uh, sentiment analysis is uh, putting weights into words, negative and positive. Because certain words would have, uh, there are certain words that are negative, certain words that are positive. Like for example, if you say suicide, that's negative, right? So something that's how the really basic explanation of what sentiment analysis here is. Like, uh, for example, let's think of a like a hypothetical situation. Let's say 
let's say the government is monitoring your search key terms or something. Yep. For example, you ha and they're able to tie it to households and individuals. Uh, I know it's impossible, but let, let's a hypothetical situation. For example, there are two households. One is talking about poison in food, divorce law, insurance before divorce, buy shovel, Google Maps. <laughs> so, so if high risk, the Pikachu one, right? So, so, so think of it like that, right? If they were able to monitor everything, and you, you'll say it's it's impossible. It's impossible to do that manually, like everyone looking at like search terms and stuff. But hey, hey, if you can do sentiment analysis, it will just flag you like, oh, this is negative. This, uh, this is negative, and we should like that will be a person of interest, right? So that's what sentiment analysis is. It sounds like science fiction, right? Right? Uh, but, not really, like just two months ago, a patent was filed for sentiment classification. You're probably wondering who filed it. Google. Yeah, yeah, and it's a little bit different though. Don't think that Google will start looking at your search terms and just doing the sentiment analysis there. This is more focused on, this is more focused on the different documents. Like one document will have a, a different sentiment than the other. But you see, the technology is out there. The concept is out there. And there's actually tools out there, like the one I told you, like Need. It's actually like a free tool that you can use. I haven't used it really, but you, you can try it out. So uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, I do believe so. So, so what the public is uh, thinking about. This is a little bit different. This is, uh, this is not about uh, what do you call it? This is not about security, information security. This is not about information warfare, but opinion polls. Like everyone nowadays thinks like uh, decisions are very highly dependent on opinion polls, which is kind of true, you know, kind of true. So what I did here was, you remember the Obama town hall meeting? That was, that was like some months ago, I forgot when, but there was like lots and lots of questions. So what I, wanted, what I was trying to do was try to look for, uh, go through all the questions and see, uh, to get a pulse of what people are concerned about. This is one of the samples here, which is healthcare. There's actually more. I, there was like auto industry, economics, and diff different stuff, but I'll show you healthcare. I actually have a site. Like, there was like this American Minds. And one of the very important things that I found, like in healthcare, was this cannabis, marijuana, marijuana. So, so <laughs> people like marijuana. People, what people like is good. Marijuana is good. <laughs> so, 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 there's probably be some benefits having Big Brother, huh? So, <laughs> So anyway, anyway, uh, this uh, would not have been possible uh, without uh, other people who are involved in this. It's not my own. A lot of the stuff that I've uh, that I've been using, other people built it, and that's why I'm sharing this to you. Hopefully, you can use it also. So uh, here, thank you very much. Here, I actually, uh, I have time, right? Let me. Yeah, if, in case there's more time, I prepared this. <laughs> Yeah, you know the chatter logs, the hacker chatter thing? So you can actually use that too. So if you have like a honeypot or something, you, you get like, a, like IRC chat logs. I don't know about the privacy stuff, legal stuff about like monitoring IRC chatter logs or something in your own honeypot, not too familiar. But, but one thing you can actually do is like monitor chat logs and find persons of interest and like correlate different cells together. For example, you're able to have like, you're monitoring different chat, chat rooms and you try to like, okay, who are these people? Who are related to which people? So you can do that too. So these are like sample chat logs and you can do like, like you can cluster them like who is related to who. So those are like some of the, 
some of the other stuff that you can do, actually sky's the limit. As long as you have data, as lo long as you have information, you can pretty much do data mining. And the tools are out there, so it's pretty easy to use, like what, the Ontogen thing. I really hope you try that out, that exercise. Like, uh, and please feel free to email me if you have problems with that, if you wa want some assistance in doing that. So in any case, uh, I think I will be Yep, I'll be accepting questions in 104 if you have any questions. So uh, thank you very much. Mahalo.